and welcome to another edition of Cooking with Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. Well, it's kind of not really Cooking with Lab Rats, but it kind of is, you know? We're cooking up a food demo anyways. I've been dying, dying, dying to use uh, Brussels sprouts in a food demo for a long, long time, since 2005 actually. Because I find them funny. They're one of the funniest vegetables going, I think. They are a bit comedic. Little cabbages. You know what, Andy? Mm. After the eggplant and zucchini incident, mm -hmm. I'm not going to be eating one of these. No, it would be advisable, absolutely. Not very tasty when they're raw. <sighs> so yeah, it's not going to happen. We're going to uh, show you how um, one of these guys works. This is a uh, SanDisk Titanium Cruiser, aka a USB key or flash memory. Mm -hmm. uh, flash memory, it has a unique, some unique uh, ways in which it stores uh, information. Of course, mm -hmm. uh, flash memory is SD cards and mm -hmm. uh, compact, memory flash. Stuff, compact flash. Even the, the uh, chip that your BIOS is contained on is flash memory as well. There's a lot of it out there. It's getting cheaper and cheaper, but... That's right. And I'm going to show you, well, we're going to show you how it works. You right might... Hmm? Yeah, you might learn something by the end of this. You <laughs> might not. It's a food demo after all. <laughs> Let's take a look at a message from our sponsor and we'll be right back. This is a pair of sneakers. They're worn and comfy. This is a Jack Russell Terrier. It likes shoes. This is Camtasia Studio 4. It can edit your screencasts. Now answer our trivia question. What screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet? I'll be back at the end of the show with the answer. Now, you know that he's Sean. And you know that I'm Andy. We've got a new guy here today. This is Ryan Ewell. Host of Ewell's Jewels mm -hmm. on the Lab with Leo Laporte. That's right. That's the new show by Leo. And uh, welcome. Thank you. You're a uh, local uh, Vancouverite. Born, bred, raised. And somehow you ended up on Leo's new show. It's a miracle. I don't know anything. But today, don't think of him as Ryan Ewell at all. He is called Floating Gate. Ready Hi, to be Floating, floating Gate? Gate? I'm ready. <laughs> Floaty float. Okay. okay. All right. So uh, now we have to follow me. Follow us very carefully on this because it's a relatively complicated thing on how flash memory works. Of course, the, you know the it's a, it's a technology where you're going to store information on one of these little devices, mm -hmm. but you don't always have power, right? So in the case right. of RAM, uh, you always have to have power to maintain any anything to maintain any information. Right. With USB keys, you take the power away after a while, and it's going to rain. You know, maintain some memory. Right, and that's why it's used for things like uh, motherboard BIOS uh, settings. It, uh, it holds that information even when the power is removed. When the power is absent. But it actually uses electrons to do that. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show you exactly how that works by starting with, so I'm, we're going to call Sean our drain. I am a bit of a drain on the production sometimes. And I am the source <laughs> because it, all the goodness comes from me. <laughs> You seem to have brought Brussels sprouts today, and I'm not sure that I agree with that, but... Okay, inside of, inside of it, any, uh, any uh, um, flash memory, there is a, a series of transistors, basically switches that go on and off, right? Mm -hmm. And they counting either a, a state of zero or a state of one, and that's the basis right. of binary counting, so it makes sense that you would have transistors that are in st either state uh, to maintain memory. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be the source, and Sean's going to be the drain on the transistor. And so what happens is I'm going to send a, a current of electricity represented by uh, Brussels sprouts here All right. from the source to the drain. So we're going to plug in our uh, USB key and the, information's, and the, and the uh, electricity is going to start flowing through. It's going to start reading or writing. Mm -hmm. It's going to look like, a little bit like this. Give me something to put these in. Okay. Well, yeah. Okay, there you go. Thank there's you. A, there's a drain. Ready? Think. Right. Okay, so, so I'm draining this out. So kind of, this is not necessarily the most efficient drain in the whole world, right. but you get the Electricity picture. is going from one point to another, okay? All right. So that's part number one. So it's just basically flowing at this point. It's flowing at that point, okay? So we're turning the electricity on, and it's flowing across a transistor. All right. Now, when it flows across a transistor from the source to the drain like that, it counts as binary zero, okay? And zero. That's, that's the state. Now, this is zero. There's a second... Zero, thank you. Thank you. He's going to follow along. <laughs> All right. So uh, the second, there's a second piece of the transistor, though, called, um, called a floating gate. And a floating gate is a, uh, another piece of silicon that actually can contain and hold a charge. Uh, so Ryan is our floating gate today. And he's surrounded by non-conductive material, meaning material that, just, that cannot, uh, you know, that electrons cannot flow through. However, using a very bizarre um, physics idea called... Um, I'm trying to think of the Fowler-Nordheim tunneling, we're going to get information 
onto the floating gate. That sounds almost like it should be a comet or a ski team Doesn't or something. It? It's a wonderful name, Fowler Nordheim Tunneling. And what I'm going to do is, is actually, for, for a moment, I'm not going to be the source anymore. I'm actually going to be the control gate. So I'm going to fire a bunch of data at, or not a bunch of data, but a bunch of electrons at our floating gate over here, and he's going to capture it uh, in his non-conductive material. You ready? Okay. All right, and actually, it's a little bit more violent than that, but it's... So we're going to chuck a bunch of stuff at him, and all of a sudden, he's going to uh, now, he's going to capture these electrons. Now, what's cool about this is that now that he has the information captured, uh, he has a different impact on the way that Sean and I interact, because, of course, we're all close together. When Sean and I pass electrons back and forth, give me that ball, I'll trade you. Remember, we're, remember I said we're in the state of zero. Information is flowing between the source and the drain, no problem. And when, when, when Ryan is empty, he has no impact. But now he's got electrons that are going to change the way that the current is, is flowed. So when I try to, sh <laughs> it's actually going in there. He's blocking it, right? So he's changing the oh, nature of the electricity as it goes between the source and the drain. So when that happens, there's actually a, a cell a receptor that's actually recording the current across the transistor. Your oh. electron has wings. <laughs> well, maybe a burst of sprouts wasn't such a good idea. But as you can, so as you can see, though, um, he gets in the way. His, he's actually holding a negative charge, and we're actually sending a positive charge. And so this, this uh, device that actually is calculating the current between the source and the drain can actually see that it's been somehow been modified. So therefore, it's counted as a one. So fundamentally, that's all that there is to it. So mm -hmm. we know if the information flows there, that's a zero. If Ryan has got information on his floating gate, or uh, I should say electrons on his floating gate, he's impacting the way that that happens, and it's counted mm -hmm. as a one. Yes, but certainly he can't hold on to these electrons forever. Well, he can, actually can't. He can't because it's a non-conductive material. Now, the ah. question is, can, and when we don't run electricity between us, he can just sit there and hold, hold his package ah. of uh, Brussels sprouts without any and problem. And that's why Flash holds this memory and even when it's powered down. Now, I ever wonder, know, how do you erase um, a floating gate? <laughs> Yes, Andy. How do you erase a floating gate and make a mess of the apartment at the same time? Well, what you do, and we're going to have to borrow some, uh, some Brussels sprouts back from Ryan just because we don't have a, an, an ample supply. But he's going to have some electrons in his floating gate here, no problem. Okay. So imagine that this is the same amount. Okay. So now what happens is your computer goes, okay, now I want to erase some information on the USB key. What mm -hmm. it's going to do is it's going to actually send a lot of information at the floating gate and cause him some... Um, Say it, rather violent reactions like this, where he's gonna actually gonna spill everything, spill everything out. <laughs> that was and a little bit less messy than <laughs> usual. <laughs> That's right. I was, I, I'm under orders actually to keep this place clean because we don't own it. Um, so that's what happens is, is the, uh, the control gate actually fires a load of uh, electrons at the floating gate and kind of washes away anything that's there. So he goes back to his normal state again, and Sean and I resume when we go and go read again, mm -hmm. he has no impact on the flow of information from the source to the drain. Mm -hmm. And then the process can start all over again when you start sending stuff over to him. That's right, exactly. There you go. That's how flash memory works. Do you get it? There's a really, really good um, uh, visual demonstration of this uh, at how, how stuff works. And we'll put up a URL so you can have a look at uh, what that's all about. So a good animation, it kind of mm -hmm. shows you. It doesn't exactly look like three guys sitting on a bunch of chairs with a bunch of Brussels sprouts. However, <laughs> you get a bit of a more visual representation of what it really is. Well, should we take a break and uh, come back? We have final words. Yep, and uh, Ryan will eat a Brussels sprout over yes. the break. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, tasty. <laughs> Earlier in the show, we asked you what screencast editor can be left unsupervised and doesn't smell like feet. Is it A, a pair of sneakers, B, a Jack Russell Terrier, or C, Camtasia Studio 4? The answer is Camtasia Studio 4. Learn more at labrats.techsmith.com. So how was it? It's not washed. <laughs> I told you. Mm, At yeah. least they're organic. Are yeah. they organic? I don't know. You are a trooper. You really are. You're, we, we love you, Ryan. Yeah, My pleasure. You know, I mentioned the uh, zucchini and uh, 
eggplant incident. Yeah. I was sick for about two months after that. <laughs> no, you weren't. Oh, it's push true. on. Push on. <laughs> All of those other Boy. episodes where I was sitting there going <coughs> throughout the thing. That's why. It was the eggplant folks. Eggplant regurgitation. I blame him. All right. And now, Ryan, you've got a couple months uh, to look forward to now. Yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> All right, a few final words. Um, I wanted to mention that uh, Sean and I have been doing a fair amount of uh, uh, mucking around on Facebook.com and uh, decided to create a little uh, Biff and Boo fan club. So if you're a member, you hop on over there and, uh, and uh, check that out because it's kind of fun. Become a member, you know, add your comments, tell us why you love the cats, that sort of thing. See the latest news about mm -hmm. Biff and Boo. Um, and, oh yeah, don't forget, we uh, remember an episode ago or so ago, we uh, talked about uh, our new buttons, mm -hmm. Biff and Boo button. The fabulous Andy Walker button, the not so fabulous Sean button, and labrats.tv. And all four of these can be yours if you send us an email to feedback at labrats.tv mm -hmm. and give us your name and where you're located, and uh, we'll send you uh, a bill for what, 10 bucks through PayPal? If you get the uh, set without the Andy Walker, it's substantially cheaper. <laughs> it's because it's very valuable. Maybe one day we'll get a Ryan one, I don't know. Maybe, who knows? <laughs> All right, well, that's it for uh, us. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Ryan Ewell. And I'm Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Bye. Are you ready? Welcome to another episode of Lab Rats. I'm Andy Walker. And I'm Sean Carruthers. And today we're going to chuck around Brussels sprouts because they're the funniest of vegetables. Don't make a mess. Oh, don't quit being such a mother hen. Don't promote your books. Yeah, I'll promote my books if I like. And I'll talk about my bum too. See, talking about your bum again. See, hey. always talking about your bum. Well, that's it. I'm going to go pour a bunch of stuff on the floor. Don't you dare. I'm up. <laughs> <laughs> cool, I gotta get out of here, guys. So, All right. Andy, until hey, next time. Yeah. It's cool, man. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, you too. Well, he's not Thank looking. You. Good luck with the, my book. the book stuff, and uh, hopefully I'll be back soon. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure I'll be back. God knows. Seriously, buy my book. It's really awesome. And buy my DVD. And buy my next book, too. <laughs>